Hi everyone, quick tutorial today talking about this wonderful uh, software that I've discovered called Shatan. I hope I pronounced that right, it's French and I believe it's it's um, the word for chestnut, which is awesome. I'm going to talk about how we can get this working with Isadora. Uh, if you're watching this, you will probably know Isadora already. Um, Isadora is a fantastic tool, but Mark, the creator, um, has created it in what I would call a non-linear way. So although it can accept time code, it doesn't have a timeline. I mean, it does, Isadora, because, you know, you have your scenes, and you can insert lots of scenes, and you can treat it in a linear way, but it's not a timeline in your traditional kind of press spacebar, and your timeline will kind of go in a sequence came across this uh, Shatan software and uh, I discovered it a few years ago but never really used it in anger and recently it's just blown my mind. So I'm not going to go through the whole interface, that's not what I'm going to do today, um, there's tutorials for that but I might do my own in future. But um, I'm going to show you how we can set up a scenario where we create a timeline and as the time goes by we can trigger things and send OSC messages into Zadora. Um, that's the kind of gentle overview of what I'm going to do. So I'm going to do this using OSC. So I need to add an OSC module. So I click this little plus sign here um, underneath the modules. And it says here, start here by adding a module to connect to another software or a physical device. Now there's loads in here. Look at that. Posi Stage Net, Ableton Link, TCP, UDP, DMX. Wow, awesome. I'm going to create OSC. So there it is. I could rename it if I wanted to, but here is all my sort of basic stuff. I don't want an OSC input, so I can actually turn that off, which is great. I just want an OSC output. Now to run that local host at the minute, local host meaning on my own machine, so I'm just going to uh, leave that as local host. Although I know that Isadora's port is 1234, unless I've changed it otherwise, let's check, because that would be embarrassing. Um, there we go, one, two, three, four. So I know that's what Isadora's waiting for messages. Don't be afraid to go down here and look at the logger. It, um, it tells you stuff down here, which is awesome. So I'm going to leave that like that. I'm not going to do anything else for the time being. Now I'm going to create a sequence. A sequence is a timeline. So I click add. Again, I could give it a name. And now we're getting into something that looks a bit familiar. If I hit spacebar, there we go. If you hit home on the keyboard, a button that you hardly ever really use, um, it will take you back to the beginning. And if we click the little plus here, now we can create all sorts of different things. Now I'm going to create a trigger timeline. It says here to add triggers, double click. So I'm going to double click and there's a trigger. I can move it up and down the timeline. Now currently the timeline is set to 30 seconds. Realistically, you're probably going to want more, but I'll leave that for now. Now you can move this up and down and you'll see that this number is changing. Um, how I've been using it, it doesn't really matter. I've been leaving it all the way down, which sends a value of one. Okay. Now this doesn't work straight away. It's doing something, but um, it's not doing much. So I'm just going to create a few triggers. So I've got five triggers there because it starts at zero. Again, you could move these up or down, but it doesn't actually matter. And now I need to tell these triggers to output to OSC. Now to do that, if I click on trigger one, you can have a consequence. So what is a consequence of that trigger? If we click add OSC custom message. Now it's got forward slash example. I'm going to put forward slash Q1. Did a double forward slash. There we go. Argument. I could just use a float. A float is a value. Um, could use a few others, but I'm just going to use a float with a value of one. I'm going to do the same here as a consequence of this trigger. Um, forward slash Q2, forward slash with a value of one as well. Now I could do this for all of them, but that's going to be a pretty boring tutorial. But now when I hit spacebar, these should be sending OSC messages out. So I'm going to put this on a loop so that the sequence is on a loop. I'm going to go to Isadora, I'm going to go to communication and stream setup, auto detect. And any second now, we should have some cues coming through.
Yeah, it looks like we're getting a message there. Just have to pause while it um, sends it through. So you can see the timeline running here. Uh, I didn't do queues two and three. So again, if I just go back home and press space bar, uh, you won't actually see the queues because it's sending the same message. But if I actually clear the list and stop and start again, just so you can see this in real time, there's Q1 and here's Q2 coming along now. There you go. Uh, and then if I click renumber port in Isadora and click OK, I can use an OSC listener here. I'm looking for channel 1 and channel 2 here. So what can we do with this? Um, there are lots of Isadora tutorials online, but essentially what I can do now is stuff like this. I can actually use Isadora in a timeline fashion. So um, just making sure I've stopped Shatan because otherwise it's actually going to trigger. When I hit spacebar now, in one second it's going to trigger Q1, then Q2. So Isadora is going to receive this message and trigger and jump to this scene after a second and then it will go to this scene. Again I could rename these but I'm not going to right now. So if I put Isadora on this side and Shatan on this side, um, doesn't look too good on the screen, but essentially what's going to happen is when I hit spacebar here in the timeline, it's going to trigger Isadora. So let's have a look. There's the first jump, and the other one will jump in just a second. There we go. So that is how you can treat um, Shatan as the timeline for Isadora. Bonus tip, because I think you'll love this, if you go to project settings, you can um, enable a server and we have to create a dashboard. So let me just quickly create a dashboard. This will make sense in a second. Uh, go back to project settings. So enable it on port 9999. You can put a password on here. Totally want to use that dashboard. What we can do is practically any graphical element that we can see here on the uh, on the software we can right click and send to dashboard so there's the current time i can resize it i can change the font if i wanted to text size let's make that a bit bigger and um, i believe i can add these triggers and um, so q1 send to dashboard there's q1 i think it'll light up or do something q2 center dashboard i've not rehearsed this bit so hopefully it works but essentially what this will do i don't think we can see the triggers unfortunately there's probably a way to do that but essentially what i'm going to do is um go to um a new tab and it'll tell you down here my ip address so one nine two one six eight 137.1 remember the port number was 999 and there I have um, an interface I can control the time you can see it in the background there and any changes I make here will be shown oh it's disappeared it will be shown in this tab so you've got a web GUI basically you've actually got an interface where you can um, send data in and receive it out of Shatan which is absolutely awesome but after all that's what this software is designed to do again if I open um, the actual website which I'll put in the description it is an artist friendly modular machine for art and technology so it's going to work really well with Isadora and a few others so that's my little overview um, I'm sure that'll be useful to some of you and um, I could go on and talk about all sorts but you can add color here and send color data out and um, which is awesome and we can also send um, what's the other one mapping so we can create mapping data so like values with bezier curves and you do the same thing the output add to osc custom message um float forward slash um with a not that one float value and this will do the same thing this is going to send values out numbers 
and you could pick that up via OSC. Really, really exciting. I absolutely love it. You should um, definitely check it out.